आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन फॉर यू कैन यू टेल मी इन कॉमन सेक्शन वॉट इज रिफ्लेक्शन इन सिंगल हाई स्पीड नेट हेलो पीपल वेलकम टू एस टीम पी सी बी यूट्यूब चैनल इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट सिग्नल इंटाइग्रिटी फॉर दिस टॉपिक आई एम रेफरिंग सिग्नल इंटाइग्रिटी सिंप्लीफाइड बुक बाई एरिक बोगेटिन आई गेस नथिंग एल्स इज रिक्वायर टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस टॉपिक वेरी बेटर सो इफ यू वॉन्टेड टू गो इन वेरी डिटेल यू कैन क्लिक ओवर द लिंक गिव इन ऑन द डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड फॉलो दिस बुक Now before starting this topic I want to thank EMA EDA for supporting STEAM PCB and providing all the learning material which I'll be sharing with the world through this YouTube channel So people you can go to their website and get Sigrity SI simulation tool free trial I'll put link in the description because very soon I'm going to start simulation part further on this high speed series people you can support this channel as well by enrolling into esteem pcb mix signal and high speed board design courses with that said let's move to our topic signal integrity let's start with what is high speed signal so the signal which has clock frequency greater than or equal to 100 megahertz and rise time less than or equal to 1 nanoseconds are high speed tracks or high speed signals another question that we can ask what is what is signal integrity so signal integrity refer to all the problems arise due to interconnects in any high speed product that is what is signal integrity is all right so you can say all the problems due to transmission line or interconnects in any high speed products all right so here we used another term transmission line and interconnect so let's talk about that what are transmission line and interconnects to discuss further in transmission line let's suppose we have a transmitter all right which kind of generate the signal and we have a receiver all right and between transmitter and receiver we have interconnects so when i'm using this term interconnects it refer to everything between transmitter and receiver for example it refer to package it referred to tracks in a board or pcb it refer to vias that we are using for layer change and after layer change we are again routing our tracks on a pcb then again go back to package at the other side uh, or you can say at the receiver side and then our signal will finally receive so everything comes between transmitter and receiver is a part of interconnect all right and when our interconnects are not properly designed either by the chip manufacturer or by the hardware designer or pcb designer then si problems arise all right so we'll discuss that in very detail uh, later let's move to our another point so we can divide all type of si problems into three major category so first category is noises and under noises the si problem comes a a problem is ringing all right so how ringing looks so let's suppose we have a signal here and it just oscillate and then stabilize itself so if you are seeing this kind of waveform then this is related to ringing we'll discuss cause and solution of these problems later another problem can be ground bounce so this is our zero volt and instead of a constant zero volt on this you will see some spikes 
it can be positive negative or in both direction right so this is due to ground bounds another problem can be reflection so how reflection waveform looks like it will be like something like this right so here you can see first reflection here second here like that then another noises problem is near end crosstalk and far end crosstalk so here we can take an example how it looks like so this is our so ideally uh, let's suppose this is our aggressor net all right so crosstalk means we have a aggressor net and we have a victim net so because of some signal is going to transfer on aggressor net it is causing some spikes on victim nets right so if it is causing a positive spike on victim net then due to this rising okay that will be our next or near end crosstalk and if it is causing negative spike then it will be fixed or far end crosstalk all right and this is our aggressor net another problem can be switching noise so here we have two waveforms this is again a kind of crosstalk right so one aggressor net it is switching but it is causing some problems in the victim net waveform right write this right so this is kind of switching noise another problem uh, again comes under noises is load capacitance so how load cap how waveforms looks like for load capacitance case so it will be like this if you see any these kind of waveform it can be in positive and negative both direction then this is happening due to load capacitance on the line all right similarly we can move to another noise problems that can be due to attenuation okay so how waveforms looks like if there is attenuation in your track due to something all right we'll discuss that later so ideally the waveform should be like this right but due to attenuation it couldn't able to reach the full uh, you can say uh, the full voltage and start lowing down right so these are all the attenuated waveforms all right so these are some problems similarly you can go for uh, you can look for non monotonicity that is again a problem you can go for power bounds so similarly like ground bounds you will see spikes on power lines or power planes all right so these are all the noise problem let's look for second category and second category is emi and emc okay so i'm just going to tell you definition here so emi is most related to electromagnetic emission from your hardware or chip or tracks okay so that is emission from board or from pcb or from product you can say anything right now emc is uh, related to compliance right so it is effect of emission to your board so that means your board is sitting somewhere inside a product and we have another part which is causing the electromagnetic emission right and it is kind of affecting your pcb right 
So your PCB should be protected for both of the cases for emission for electromagnetic interference and for electromagnetic compliance. All right. For both of the cases, your PCB should be designed like that. All right. Let's discuss the third category, which is related to timing. Okay. So timing uh, is basically we are talking about clock period. Okay. So we have one clock period. All right. And we basically allocate that clock period to let's suppose five to 10 processes. Okay. And due to signal integrity, if the if something happened to this timing or this clock period, okay, I, it can be delay, it can be attenuation, it can be anything. Okay, so it will cause interrupts or you can say halt in these processes, right, or stop these processes, right. So these are all the problems which comes under, under the timing related signal integrity issues. Okay, we'll discuss that in more detail later. If we'll explore more under these three categories, we'll got to know about 25 different problems, even more than that different signal integrity problems. All right. So we have to understand the root cause of these problems and what are the solutions. Okay. Another step is now we can further devise divide these 25 or more than that problems into six major parts that we're going to cover in upcoming videos. So I hope this video was useful for you and you have learned a couple of things. In case of any doubt or you have any questions, you can put in the comment section. I'll reply you there ASAP. Thank you. See you on the next video.